Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. This is the fourth video in a series about states of matter. This lesson, more specifically, phase changes and the curves that they create on the graph. So if you're needing to know about heating curves, cooling curves, phase change graphs, stay tuned. I'm going to talk about all of that. So go grab your notes, go get something to write with. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Okay, let's get started. First, let's make sure that we remember all of the phase changes. Now, you know a lot of these, but there might be a couple of new ones. Let's start down here. If we've got solid, I often think of ice when we think of solid, and I also think of water when we think of liquid. If we're going from a solid to a liquid, we just call that melting. We probably know all about that. And then the reverse, if we're going to go from liquid water to solid ice, this is freezing, very common ones. What about if we go from a liquid to a gas? Now, there's two words that I like to write here. This is evaporation, and that's if you don't really add any extra heat. But let's say we're boiling some water. You wouldn't say, oh, I just evaporated all that water out of my pot because I left it on too long. No, we would call that boiling. Actually, we wouldn't even call it boiling. We would call it vaporizing. That's the real word, vaporizing. And then if we're from a gas and we go back to a liquid, that's condensation. And I feel like these are the ones we're probably the most familiar with. But what if we go from a solid directly to a gas? Do you know we could do that? If we bring that temperature up very quickly, we can skip the liquid form. To go from a solid to a gas, you know a good example of this? Dry ice to make smoke. You know at Halloween, you got dry ice, you put a little water on it, and it goes directly from a solid to a gas to make that smoke. That is called sublimation. Now, I'm being honest with you, teachers like to ask about sublimation. And then the very opposite of that, going from a gas to a solid, this is called deposition. Okay, so make sure that you understand and know the names of all six phase changes. We need to talk about a little bit more about phase changes. When you go from a more ordered state, like a solid, to a less ordered state, like a gas, you're going to have to add energy because you've got to break up those intramolecular forces, which makes sense. If you're going from a solid to a gas, you're going to have to heat it up very quickly and very hard. And the reason why is because you got to break these intramolecular forces. So of course you would have to add in energy. And if we're talking about the reverse, a less ordered state like a gas or even liquid to a more ordered state like a solid. So if we're going from liquid water to solid water, we're going to have to release energy. Energy is going to have to be taken out of the system if we're going to get our liquid to freeze or if we're going to get our gas to freeze. We're going to have to remove energy. In science, we don't really talk about making things colder. You have the presence of heat and the absence of heat. You are putting energy into the system, making things hotter, or you're removing heat, making things colder. Okay, so since we're talking about putting heat in and taking heat out, that makes us think of endothermic and exothermic. So remember, endothermic, endo, heat goes in. We're needing to put heat into the system. So melting, if we're taking our ice and melting it to water, you're going to have to add heat. Heat goes in. Vaporizing, remember that's just a fancy word for boiling. And to make something boil, you're going to have to add heat. And sublimation, if you're wanting to sublime something, sublimate, then you're going to have to add heat in. These are all considered to be endothermic processes because heat goes in. A misconception that my students always have when we talked about endothermic way back when at the beginning of the school year, you would think about endothermic leaving the surroundings feeling cold. You got to stop thinking about that. Endothermic means heat goes in. When you put heat in, we melt, vaporize, and sublime. Let's also talk about the opposite of that, exothermic. Exo, heat is exiting, heat is going out. 
So condensation. To go from a very disordered gas back to a liquid, we've got to take energy out. It's got to be getting cooler. So we're removing the heat. To freeze liquid water into ice, you've got to remove the heat. You've got to make it colder. Heat is going out. And then the same thing with deposition. To go from the gas to the solid, you've got to remove the heat to let those intramolecular forces form back up and to make that solid. Again, common misconception. When we think about from the past, normally we would think about, ooh, exothermic reaction, that feels hot. That's true, but it's because it's releasing heat. Heat is going out into the surroundings for us to feel. Don't think about that. It is all about heat exiting the situation. Teachers love to ask these questions about what's an endothermic process and an exothermic process. Make sure you feel really good about that. Couple of vocab words here because we're gonna talk about some curves and some graphs and we need to know these. The heat effusion is the heat needed to melt. Heat evaporization, this is the heat energy needed to vaporize, okay? Make sure and write those down. Let's talk about a heating curve. Now, all heating curves are gonna have this general shape where we have an increasing slope, a slope of zero, an increasing slope, a slope of zero, and an increasing slope. Let's talk about what all this means. Let's also notice our axis. As we go across the X, more and more time is going by. As we increase up the Y axis, our temperature is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay, so down here, this is when we have a solid. You know, ice doesn't melt immediately. It's gotta warm up first. So as time's going by, we're adding more heat, more heat, more heat, but we're still in the solid form. Then here, we start to melt. This flat right here, this is the heat effusion. Now. If you notice, we've got this zero slope. That's because all of the, all of the energy, because we're adding energy in all this time, all the energy is going into melting. So this is where melting takes place. You would start here at the melting point and it's going to stay constant all the way until everything is melted. Once everything is turned to a liquid, then the temperature can rise again. So in this flat, we're going to have solids and liquids mixed together in the same beaker. All of our ice melts and it doesn't instantly start to boil. We've got to add more heat over some time. So we are adding more heat, adding more heat. And in this slant right here, everything is a liquid. All the way until we get here, the boiling point. This flat is called the heat of vaporization. And so we're still adding heat because see, we're sitting on the burner for a longer time, longer time, longer time, but our temperature is not increasing because all of the energy is going in to creating that boil. Remember, we're not gonna call it boil though, we're gonna call it vaporization. So here, we start to get vaporization. And so if we were having a container, we would have some liquid present, but we would also start to see vapor. I'm gonna go ahead and call that gas. And we're boiling, 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 vaporizing, vaporizing until we get to where everything boiled away, except for it didn't disappear, it's all gas. So in this last part, it's just going to be all gas. Okay, let's kind of review that again. We're heating up our solid, heating up our solid. Oh, it started melting. While it's melting, the temperature does not increase. We're still adding energy, but all of that energy is going into breaking those intramolecular forces to change from a solid to a liquid. So the heat energy is being used, that heat effusion energy is being used to break those intramolecular forces that is going to allow us to get melting. Once it's all melted, the temperature will start to rise again because this is only a liquid state. We're adding energy, adding energy oh, until we hit that boiling point. We start to get bubbles, lots of bubbles. The temperature does not increase the entire time. All that energy is going again to breaking intramolecular forces. That energy that's breaking those intramolecular forces, that's called the heat of vaporization. 
Temperature is not rising, even though we're adding energy in. That energy is allowing the vaporization process to happen. We're breaking those intermolecular forces. Now, if we were to look into our boiling pot of water, no more water because it's all gas. This is our heating curve. Let me point something else out on this graph as well. Kinetic energy. This is the energy of motion. Anytime you have a positive slope, that is going to represent kinetic energy. Anytime we have a flat, that's going to represent potential energy. So we've got kinetic energy on the slant, potential energy. That means all of the energy is going into breaking the bonds. The temperature is not rising. Once all of the intermolecular forces are broken, then the temperature can rise again. When temperature is rising, that represents kinetic energy. Temperature's rising, kinetic energy is increasing until we hit that boiling point, that vaporization point then all of that energy is going to breaking those intermolecular forces. Again, this is potential energy. Potential energy because the temperature is not rising. And then when we get it all to a gas and the temperature can rise again, we have kinetic energy again. Let's look at a cooling curve. Now, a cooling curve, it's exactly the same except for exactly the opposite. I know that's not the same, is it? So here, we're going to start with our gas. This is where vaporization is happening, except for... Vaporization is when you're heating. That's not what's happening. When we go from a gas to a liquid, this is where condensation is happening. We start at a very high temperature. We lose heat. We lose heat. Oh, those intramolecular forces are starting to form again. And then we get our liquid. And then when our temperature is decreasing, 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 oh, what happens when our liquid turns to a solid? That's when we start getting freezing. Temperature stays steady because we're reforming those intramolecular forces and then we're going to get our solid. When we talked about kinetic and potential energy on the heating curve, we talked about gaining kinetic energy. Here, we could still label this as kinetic energy, but we're losing kinetic energy. Potential energy, the state is the same. And then here, when we're talking about kinetic energy, again, we're losing kinetic energy. We're losing kinetic energy. The flat is still called potential energy because we are reforming those intermolecular forces. During a phase change, you might notice, there is no temperature change during a phase change because all of the energy that's being added or subtracted, it's all about making and breaking those intramolecular forces. Now, when we're talking about these graphs, sometimes you'll hear this acronym STP. STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure. The standard temperature, and this is a definition, you have to know what this means. Standard temperature, zero degrees Celsius. Standard pressure, this is like atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere. When we talk about boiling points and melting points, if we, talk, if we use the word normal, normal boiling point, normal melting point, this is the melting point and the boiling point at standard pressure. We're going to look at a phase change. Okay, so if we're looking at this basic shape of a phase diagram, this will always represent the solid, this the liquid, this the gas. And you would use this as pressure or temperature changes. Let's say you have a, a pressure that's here and a temperature that's here. If we meet those points together, that means we're going to have a solid. Or when we meet our points together and it's over here, we're going to have a liquid. And if we meet our points together, like for example, this one and this one, and we have our, our dot over here, that's going to be a gas. Here, we're going from, from a solid to a liquid, so we're melting. Where it crosses the line right here, this is called the normal melting point. Because remember, normal is at one atmosphere, standard pressure. So if we're like, okay, one atmosphere, oh, normal melting point. And if we travel over, when we get a liquid to change to a gas, that is called vaporization. And if we're talking about normal boiling points or normal vaporization points, it's got to be at one atmosphere. Normal boiling point. But let's say we lower the pressure. We lower the pressure to here. The boiling point is going to change. Now, it's not going to be called the normal, boiling, the normal melting point, but we will have a new melting point. Because these phase changes, they depend on temperature, but also pressure. So if we were going from, if I gave you a point on the graph and it was over here, and then I gave you a new point on the graph and if it was over here. So if we're going from this point to this point, 
that would represent melting and vice versa. If we were going from a point here to over here, then we would call that, if we're going from a liquid to a solid, that would be freezing. And then if we're in the liquid, and we could just lower the pressure, keep the temperature the same. If we're going from a liquid to a gas, boiling or vaporizing, and then if we start down here at a gas and we just increase the pressure, then if we go from a gas to a liquid, then that is condensation. And then you can also show sublime when you go from a solid to a gas, that sublimation or vice versa from the gas to a solid, that's deposition. So a lot of times teachers will give you points and say you're going to go from here to here. What phase change happened? Basically, you just have to always remember that this portion is a solid. This is our liquid. This is our gas. Now there's a couple of other points on this graph that we need to know. Let me try to do a different color. This point here where they all three meet, you can manipulate the pressure and the temperature to where you have all three phases together at once. I know, crazy to think about, but there are circumstances that you can have all three phases represented all at one time. This is called the triple point. Kind of makes sense. And then you're going to have a point here. This point here is called the critical point. That is where the line starts to kind of blur between liquids and gases. That's where you get really, really unstable states of matter. Now, I know this is really messy, so you might have to rewind and watch me redraw this if you need to pick up on something else. Okay, well, I hope that helps. We talked about all the different phase changes, what's exothermic and endothermic processes. We looked at a heating curve, a cooling curve, and phase diagrams. So if you've been watching all of the videos in this series, then you should know everything about solids, liquids, and gases, the properties about liquids, intermolecular forces, and now phase changes and heating curves. You need to know more about gas laws? That's coming, I promise. Make sure you stay tuned. Until next time, bye y'all.